Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Jimmy Dore Show. I'm here with my good buddy Richard Escal from the Zero Report. Hey, how, Zero, Zero hour. hour. I'm sorry. Right. Zero Hour. Yes, Richard. So check it out, his podcast. There's a link underneath. Uh, right now we're talking about the tax plan that the Republicans, it's not really a plan. It's just kind of a tax uh, scatterbrain to cut money for rich people. Robert Reich describes it this way. Imagine taking more than $300 billion, billion from older and sicker people who need health insurance and giving that $300 billion to big corporations and wealthy people as a tax cut. That's the GOP plan. And that is basically the GOP plan, right? So here's here's some here's a little bit more specifics. I won't give you a bunch of them, but uh, households earning between seventy five and a hundred thousand dollars will see, on average, no tax cut. All households earning less than seventy five thousand dollars per year will see, on average, a tax increase. The median income in America household is right around fifty thousand dollars. So most of the, the people in America are going to see a tax increase. You know who won't? The richest people in the country and corporations. About 65% of households fall into the categories that are expecting tax increases. While about 24% in the the privileged group that will have its taxes cut. Uh, Also inside this is an estate tax repeal and an individual. So that's going to help super wealthy people. And the individual mandate repeal is going to make health care less accessible to poor people. So, again, we're helping the people who don't need any help, and we're screwing over the people who are treading water in America, or worse. And here's a chart. This is from an NYU uh, professor, and she shows you how she does it all the way out by uh, by 2027. New estimates, Senate Republicans' tax plan would, on average, raise taxes on all income groups earning less than $75,000 by 2027. That's according to nonpartisan official estimates. So there you go. So that's the percentage. So the, now Republicans are coming out against this. Right. Right. So right now, in fact, uh, a top Republican fundraiser in the state of New York has quit his position in the state's Republican Party because of congressional Republicans tax reform bill. According to a new report, Steve Loro, who has served as a regional finance director for the New York Republican Party, quit the position on Tuesday. And what did he say? He said the bill that's going to get passed is not going to take care of the American people. It's a disgrace. It's going to hurt a lot of middle class Republicans. The Times also reported that Luro used an expletive to describe how Republicans messed up after they took control of the government against all odds. I'm going to guess he he said, boy, they really fucked up as soon as because I now this is what I've talked about. Uh, is that the silver lining on a Trump victory is that they now have to legislate. So why the big reason why Trump got elected it was because he was able to run as a populist, even though he was running as a right winger, because he didn't have a track record that people could point to. Right. So now he has. Now they have to govern. Now they have to make people's lives better or worse. And you and I both know they're going to make people's lives worse. Right. So this is what the uh, the Democrats have to do: is stick all these policies to Trump. Uh, and that's how they'll take him down. How did the Democrats lose to these motherfuckers? Well, that's the big question. You know, I mean, uh, starting with Trump. Uh, first of all, most unpopular uh, candidate for president since they started tracking that sort of thing. So how do you lose to a guy? I mean, Russia? Re- okay, did you lose 1,000 uh, legislature seats to Russia, too? Did you lose— both houses of Congress to Russia, you know, I mean, yeah. Okay, follow the election. I mean, the investigation on that. Let's find out where it goes. But in the meantime, uh, you know, look to your own, uh, you know, every time a Democrat says something about how ridiculous Trump is, which I agree with, and horrible, it's like, yeah, but you lost to him. And, 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 and what does that say? Um, so, so, look. The fact is, now they 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 have no ideology. They have the only loot and run, you know, smash and burn and smash and grab, and that's what they got. And they're going crazy with the guys like the one that's quoted here, uh, who quit his job, and the one the the 
senators who are now sort of distancing themselves from it, they get that if you're too obvious about it, yeah. if you hit 75% of the people with a tax increase, they figure like bleeding Medicare dry, that's kind of subtle yeah. compared to what they're doing now. They can get away with that, maybe, but they, but they particularly because the Democrats are incompetent uh, at running against them, apparently. But, uh, but when you do something that blatant where people are going to look at their tax bill next year and go, whoa, you know, they know they're going to lose their jobs. So that that's why they're starting to push back against it. Just one thing, by the way, that I want to add. It says 24 percent of households will see a tax increase. That's true, I'm sure. But of those 24 percent, most will only see a tiny amount. But the very, very, very wealthy will see a gigantic amount. And the last time this came about, I talked about the number of people who are going to lose Medicaid and other health coverage and the projected deaths from that to try to figure out how many dead people the average billionaire was going to get uh, as a tax break per year. And it came out, I think, to about seven and a half dead people per year per billionaire. Really? I mean, it's like, make it real. Yeah. Put it, you know, maybe more than that. I can't even remember the number, whether I use millionaire or billionaire. But there were like a lot, there was like, uh, you know, Paulie Walnuts and the Sopranos said, you know, all the guys I whacked, they're following me around like goats. I want to see if this thing passes all the people that die because of these tax cuts. I want to see them following the billionaires around like ghosts. Well, here here we I do, too. Here we are again. Um, I tried to before, before the election and, and after I tried to impress upon people that you have to think beyond one election cycle. Right. And the people who weren't were the people who were angry at me for not supporting Hillary Clinton, which I couldn't do. I couldn't give my vote to another corporatist warmonger who exploded the prison population, repealed the New Deal banking legislation, overthrows governments, was for the Iraq war, and is for fracking, and is, and, and is a toady of Wall Street. I just couldn't do that anymore because that's what gave us Trump. That's what people don't remember. So the reason why we got Trump is because people are sick and tired of a, this kind of shit sandwich choice, right? right? And we voted for Barack Obama. We, people voted for change in 2008, 2010, 2012, 14, and 16, and they still haven't gotten any change. And that's what people want. People still want change, and they're not getting it. So... Um, I just you have say, to think beyond. Just let me, okay, you have sure. to think beyond one election cycle. Right. So here we are now. Donald Trump is an incompetent. He shoots himself in, in the foot two times before he gets out of bed in the morning. He wasn't able to have a Muslim ban. They keep overturning it. He wasn't able to repeal Obamacare. He wasn't able to pass his own health care legislation. And now his tax bill seems in jeopardy. The guy's a legislative failure, and people want to replace this guy with Mike Pence. Right. Well. Well. Look. Look. You're 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 talking out of my book there, you know, that, that people can't think uh, one step ahead. And I do have to say, by the way, that when it comes to this fight that's going on among Democrats about where the party should go, and it's basically between the Bernie people and the, you know, uh, and, the corporatists. And, and the corporatists, that uh, everybody wants to talk. First of all, a confession I'll make to you that I've never made publicly before. I was going to vote for Hillary Clinton, but I lost my absentee ballot. So I didn't have to go through that that moment of crisis maybe i wouldn't have i don't know but the th everybody wants to talk about about the jill stein voters it's all their fault right and you know here's the thing and i've people i've gotten people furious at, at me for just pointing this out i said why are you fixating on the one or two percent of the part of the of the vote electorate who actually showed up to vote who voted for uh, for, I have strong feelings about this in terms of your long range strategy. Uh, uh, why are you fixing? Number one, why are you fixating on them and not on the 48 percent of the people who didn't show up to vote because they didn't have an option that meant anything to them? That's number one. And number two is, uh, look, I'm old school. OK, I feel and I've had this conversation with congressmen and senators, and everything else. I feel you're. Yeah, that's a sales job. If you don't sell what you're selling, the vo the, the customer hasn't failed, buddy. You yes! failed. You failed. So don't talk to me about what's wrong with Jill Stein voters. Talk to me about how you failed to reach those voters and what you're going to do to get them next time around. Richard, that's exactly what we've been saying. Hillary Clinton was the only candidate in history who was expected to garner votes without campaigning for them. <laughs> Right. If you need a vote, you're supposed to go get that vote. You're not supposed to wag your finger at them and says, how dare you think you have a, you can vote for anybody you want. What do you think this is, a democracy?
Jimmy, this has been endemic in the Democratic Party for years. It's inc including people who, by the way, I like a lot on a personal level and I think are on the, basically on the side of the angels. But you talk to them, a lot of people privately, and they'll say, you know, these millennials, for example, these kids, they don't show up and vote. You know, it's their, it's like, okay. Guess you got to work harder. Yeah. You know, <laughs> OK, well, what are you going to do to change that? But and, and, but instead, it's, well, you know, they're, you know, it's blaming, it's blaming you know, the people you didn't reach. There was a time when the evangelicals weren't in the pocket of the right wing. They weren't in the pocket of, right. of the Republican Party. Guess what the Republican Party did? They came up with policies that appealed to them, and now they're solid Republicans. Right. That's what, hey, if the, if the progressives and the environmentalists aren't supporting you and the Democratic Socialists aren't supporting you, maybe you, and you need their support to win, you're supposed to come up with policies that get those people in to vote for you. That's what you're supposed to do. And right. if you don't have a policy, exactly, they're blaming the customer. All oh, these fucking customers, they don't like our shit food. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think we'll serve it up again, but this time we'll lecture them about, you know, as they're walking by down the street, what, what's wrong with you that you're not coming into the I have restaurant? to, I've explained. I, I, you don't I, like my food? Well, yeah. you know, it's 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 the lesser of two evil foods. That guy's food is even worse. <laughs> I try to tell people, th people. Then people just don't go to any restaurant. Th that's, that's what a, happens. That's what happens. They stay right. home and eat. And, and that's not how <laughs> politics work. Politics right. works. They don't go, hey, it's a binary. People say that. It's a binary choice. You're going to vote for someone who has a chance to win. That's not how politics works. You get to vote for whoever the fuck you want to vote for. And, you know, I was trying to get the Green Party to 5% so they could get matching funds in the next election because you have to think beyond one election cycle. Right. Let's get back to this. Okay. So several Republicans from states like New York and New Jersey have come out in opposition to the House's GOP's tax plan over concerns that middle class constituents could suffer from elimination of the state and local tax deduction. So that would definitely suffer from that. And uh, so now they're losing more people. So, again, Trump cannot govern. These people cannot govern. Paul Ryan cannot govern. Right. John Boehner couldn't govern before him. That's why they got rid of him. Paul Ryan can't govern. Mitch McConnell can't govern. And Trump certainly can't govern. And when I say govern, I mean, have uh, legislation that A, does good things for the country and B, makes people want to vote for them. So what they're doing right now is all this horrible, horrible stuff. And, uh, and if the Democrats can't beat them now, then there's no excuse. But again, they, there's no excuse for them losing to Donald Trump. And they did that. The Times also reported that Lural used an OK, we already did that. But so here. Here is a Democratic congressman uh, and he's upset about the Republican tax bill, and he's also upset that they're jamming it through without a hearing. Hmm. Right. So that was the thing they hated about Barack. They said, oh, Barack Obama, is a, he's a he's a dictator and he's pushing through stuff. by. Fi well, they're doing the exact same thing. There's no debate, no discussion, no nothing, not even a hearing, no experts called, no nothing. And he's going to be upset about no, it. Since this is theater and that's all this is today is theater. This is, as we started out the conversation, the oldest continuous committee in the United States Congress. And without a hearing, you're going to proceed with the great charade. Mr. Bartold, I'd like to call the head of the Department of Revenue Services from the state of Connecticut. Have you heard from him? Uh, I have not received a phone call. Has he been called as an expert witness? No, he hasn't been called as an expert witness. And the transfer that's going to take place, I'll take Lee Zeldin's comments about the transfer of wealth from one region of the country to the other. On the backs of hardworking people of the middle class, you talk about taxing success. All of our working professionals, whether you're a machinist or a teacher, and in the case of a teacher, if they reach into their pocket, if they reach into their pocket to pay for their students, you get rid of that deduction as well. So you can give it to somebody who's already got an $11 million deduction on the estate tax. This is outrageous. You are all good and honorable people. So I have two things to say about what he's, he goes on a little bit longer and we'll play it. But um, where's the passion from the rest of the Democratic Party about this? How come, how come Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer aren't screaming at the top of their lungs like this guy for the last three weeks about this? How come they're not doing that? How come there isn't marches? How come they aren't warring rallies? If this is really going to hurt people like he says it is, and it is, 
Why doesn't the Democratic Party do a goddamn thing about it? Why are they just let a guy like this, anon- almost pretty much anonymously, scream his head off inside of Congress? And I don't know where else people are going to hear about this, but uh, and and then he does that bullshit where he says you're all good and honorable people. Well, no, they're fucking not. So if they if they can do this and you still call them good and honorable people, what is the price to pay for them? Why can't you call a liar a liar? Why can't you call a bullshitter a bullshitter? And why can't you call a guy working against his own constituents a scumbag? Why do you got to play this fuck? Why do they do that? Well, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, well, because they hang out. They got to spend their whole day together. I'm not defending it. I'm yeah. saying, uh, number one. Number two, they've seen all the polling. See, uh, polling is an interesting thing, and it has a lot to do with this. Poll... Uh, the, uh, People will, pollsters will ask questions, usually pollsters paid for by billionaires who want bipartisan tax cuts, right? Like Pete Peterson or somebody. The pollsters will pay for, uh, uh, billionaires will pay for a poll that says, um, do you want to see Democrats and Republicans working together in a civil fashion? And everybody will go, yes. So they then they pass these polls around. So all these guys are told, you know, you better be civil. You better talk up civility and cooperation. Of course, the polls never say, do you want to see Republicans and Democrats working together in a civil fashion to screw you out of every last cent you have? Because then people would say, not so much. You know, this guy up until that point, I thought he was doing great. Yeah. And, and, but they all feel they have to say that. And, and the net effect from a communication point of view, in my opinion, is you throw a punch and then you pull it at the yes. last minute. And then people are like, well, you know, I kind of like that guy, but he can't really throw a punch. Right. And I, I, I want a guy who will throw a punch. And the other guy seems like, you know, a dick, but he, he's, he, he's in there. He's in the fight. So maybe I'll vote for him. That's that's one of the reasons I think that Republicans keep winning. And by the way, they should be screaming twice as loud as this guy every day. They're all talking about Russia. None of them are talking about the fact that Republicans are rigging elections all across this country, have been for 10 years, stealing votes, suppressing votes. Why aren't they screaming about that at the top of their lungs why haven't they been doing it every day for 10 years why haven't they been saying god damn it this is a democracy how dare you get in the way of it but there again they 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 don't even throw that punch much less pull it so you you sound like uh you agree with this show uh, that the democratic party is not capable of reform uh i would it's interesting because i um I experimented when I, I when I moved back. To, I actually live in Maryland now, and uh, after living for a couple of years in D.C., and I re-registered as a Democrat for the first time in many years because Ben Jealous, who I like, is running in the Democratic primary uh, for governor. But I am open to the idea of a, what I would call a hostile takeover of the Democratic Party because it's on so many ballot lines. If that can be done, uh, I w- definitely am interested in that. Uh, I think, but that means a complete removal of the leadership that's in there now. Um, the latest Harvard Harris poll shows that most Democrats want the party. They say they support movements put, that want to push the party to the left and replace its current leadership. Most Democrats, 52 percent. And are they Bernie bros? Are they white guys? Are they white dudes? Because isn't that what the Democrats keep telling us? No, 55 percent of women want to do that. of African-Americans, 65% of Hispanics, 69% of people under the age of 30, voters under the age of 34. So if we can get channel those people, then I'd be open to a hostile takeover. Otherwise, it's time to look elsewhere. Okay. I'm for it. Well, let's see what else this guy has to say. It is hard to believe that we find ourselves in this situation. You just went through this with the Health Care Act. The American public just witnessed again what happens when you jam something down. And for the American public, understand what's going on here today is 2416. That's the only thing you need to know for this discussion and debate today. Mr. Bartot, I apologize to you and your hardworking staff because you're me merely a showpiece today for your camouflage for what's really going on here. It's been stated over and over again that they need a political win. You know who needs a win? The American people need a win. 
They need to see us acting in regular order, responsibly. Mr. Neal pointed out in his opening remarks, in the Tax Reform Act of 86, 30 hearings were conducted in this committee, 12 in the subcommittee, 450 expert testimonies. We have none, none. No one was allowed to come forward. As Mr. Doggett pointed out, no one from the administration will even sit in front of us. We're the oldest committee in Congress, many would argue the most prestigious, and members on this side of the aisle aren't even entitled to bring an expert witness on any aspect of the tax code that affects 100% of our economy. 100% of the economy is impacted. And people in my state, in the middle class, are going to get a tax increase. So, um, boy, that guy, can you imagine if uh, a Democrat sounded like that when they were actually campaigning? Imagine if a guy said, imagine if they were able to make horrible Republican policies stick to the Republicans. How the fuck do the Democrats lose to people like that? How does how does this guy or all the how do they lose to people who are actively screwing people over, doing it through all kind of un, un, uh, unorthodox order, no order, uh, no debate, no discussion, no testimony, no experts, no not, just screwing people over, helping the rich, screwing over most of the country. And the Democrats still find a way to lose to those people. What does that tell you? That tells you the Democratic Party is beyond repair. They are going to keep finding ways to lose to them. And even if they win, they suck. Barack Obama opened up the Arctic to drilling twice. So, uh, it, again, uh, that's just one example of how horrible. And right now he's on a tour taking bribe money from banks. Barack Obama came back in the public life and he's getting his bribes paid to him. $400,000 at a pop. The Democratic Party is beyond repair. Uh, that guy's screaming, you know, that's a, that's a lot of bluster. That's a lot of big voice. I'm glad you told that those people who are fucking over the country are all decent, good people. I'm glad you said that. And to take all, all the strength from your argument away. I appreciate you doing that, Larson. So here's Matthew Inglises. He says, House Republicans are about to pass a bill that raises taxes on, a, on millions of families to finance a tax cut for millionaires. And nobody's even paying attention because so much else is happening. That's not true, Matthew. You know that. Boy, this guy, if there's ever a guy who's, if you could get rich by being half true and half fucking phony, this guy would be a billionaire. Because he can't say one sentence that's completely on. It's always half true and then bullshit. And again, that's, people, why do you think people aren't paying attention, Matthew? Watch Rachel Maddow tonight. Let's see what she's talking about for 45 minutes. Russia. Let's let's go to let's what is what is Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi? What are they talking about? Why is this happening? Because they're talking about Russia. And if you want to oppose Trump in a meaningful way that actually helps the country, stop talking about Russia. Because the more you talk about Russia, it actually helps Trump. Talk about this. Talk about his health care plan. Talk about his Muslim ban. Talk about his screwing over workers. Talk about his relaxing of environmental regulation. Talk about that's how you beat Trump. And the reason why nobody's talking about it, Matt, is because you motherfuckers are all talking about Russia like a bunch of McCarthyist assholes doing a red scare to cover for your failures in beating Donald Trump. So why do you think what, what do you think? What do you make of that tweet by Matthew Inglesias? Well, look, uh, I think that Democrats are not talking about this stuff. I think that when they do get outraged, and I will include Larson in this, it tends to be about process, their process. Yes! Larson's whole pitch was, you know, this is not the way this committee is supposed to operate. I'm uh, my I'm in, uh, you know, Iowa. My kid's addicted right. on op opioids. I, I haven't had a job in 20 years. You, you think I give a shit about <laughs> how the committee Regular order on what, you know, but it's a classic Democratic play. That's number one. Number two is, yeah, they're talking about, look, I said from the beginning that whatever is uncovered about Russia is going to be about oligarchy. Yes. And we've got oligarchs here, just like we've got 
oligarchs there. And by the way, you want to know a real international scandal involving, uh, and I also said Democrats would be involved in the Russia story, which they are. Which they are. Tony Podesta. And you want to know a real foreign country meddling in the U.S. scandal also that's pretty juicy that no one's going to talk about? Saudi Arabia. That's right. So, uh, you know, it APEC. goes— APEC. Uh, right. You know, so it goes on and on. Yeah. No, this fixation with Russia and this notion they're looking uh, for Russia as a Hail Mary pass. Oh, we don't have to change. Right. That people are going to be so outraged about Russia. And by the way, of course, they're using whatever turns out to be true about Russia. There's one thing I knew from day one, and that's that the director of Central Intelligence Report issued by James Clapper. You remember the perjurer? Yeah, James the perjurer. Clapper. The guy who lied to the American uh, people in open court. Total, a total hatchet job on the left. Isn't it funny that right wing plutocrats and oligarchs like the people in the Putin administration, that suspicion about what they might have done means that we've got to clamp down on the left. Right. Yeah. I, you know, the whole the whole thing. Sure. They're talking about that, uh, you know, to, to my fellow friends in the media like Matt Iglesias. I mean, any friends I use it in the Barack Obama sense, yeah. uh, not in the real sense that. um yeah, too bad you're not in a job where you can do something about it, right? <laughs> you know, too, too bad you're not in a position where you can, Yeah. you know, and write not only about, oh, here's a chart about the implications, which is important, and I appreciate people doing that, but here's why it's outrageous and you should be marching in the street about it. You know, here's a call to action. Right. You know, not just, well, you know, here's, here's, an, I'm going to nerd out on this, but okay, I nerded out. Now here's what you need to do. Hey, um, again, uh, your media is a propaganda. Your establishment media, that's why we have a show here. If MSNBC and guys like Matthew Iglesias and Box did their jobs, I, I wouldn't have to do this. I go back to telling jokes at nightclubs 24 hours or full time, which is what I really want to do. And then I don't have to worry about this shit. But uh, they're horrible. They are horrible. Why do we why do you think we our two choices were Hillary Clinton and fucking Donald Trump? Because that's a failure of our media. That's why. Why do you think half the country doesn't believe in science? That's a failure of our media. That's why. Okay, and that's why we have a job. So I'm glad, in a sense, I'm kind of glad they suck. I wish they didn't. I'd rather be a full-time comedian. Please make sure you subscribe. As you know, they're trying to make it hard for people to see our videos. They're unsubscribing people. Check, make sure you're subscribed. And when you do subscribe, click that bell so you get a notice when our videos come up. And thanks for being a Patreon. And we give a couple hours of uh, premium videos every week, live show videos. You get that. Thanks for being a, a, a supporter. And our next live show is December 4th in Burbank, California, and November 20th in Hollywood, California. See you then.